With the videos I've been putting out lately about migrating your OS, a lot of questions have been coming up about the BIOS and a lot of people being afraid of the BIOS. Now, there's nothing to really be afraid of, so I really wanted to talk about your BIOS a little bit more in depth, do a little bit of a deep dive. We're gonna kind of split it up into two things. We're gonna talk about features that you should really know the location of in your BIOS settings, and then some other stuff that are kind of nice to haves or some things that are really great to know in your BIOS as well. So first off, what is the BIOS? And very simply, it is a program or firmware that runs directly off the motherboard. It doesn't really require anything to operate. It doesn't require any additional storage. Some motherboards have minimal BIOS use without even a CPU installed, um, but usually you'll need at least a CPU and RAM installed in order to access the GUI of your motherboard BIOS. Um, and depending on your CPU, you may also need a GPU if your CPU doesn't support uh, any kind of graphics. Now, one of the reasons that a lot of people are afraid of the BIOS is because if you do make particular changes in your BIOS, it can cause either instability or it can even make it so that your computer won't post. So it is really important to be careful when changing settings, to be careful when adjusting things and don't just adjust things because you want to. Look into the settings that you're gonna adjust first. Make sure that whatever you're changing is something that should be changed. And again, we're gonna go over a lot of the ones that I think most people should know about. And then the ones that are nice to have, some of them are ones that are really only for more advanced features like overclocking and undervolting. We'll go over that in a second. And at the end, I'm also gonna talk about resetting your BIOS, basically making it forget anything that you had changed in it. We'll do that right at the end though. So first, one of the most important steps, getting into your BIOS. And getting into your BIOS is pretty easy. I'm gonna go ahead and turn on my computer here. For most computers, it's going to be hitting the delete or F2 key when it's booting up in order to get into the BIOS. It'll usually tell you on the splash screen, so here, Asus's board tells me press delete or F2. Now we are in the BIOS and I am currently in the advanced mode. If I go ahead and change to the easy mode, which will be the default on most motherboards, it is a very simplified set of information. You get a lot of stuff here and it's kind of nice. You get some great hardware monitoring. You can see your CPU temperature, your motherboard temperature, you can know what processor you have, your RAM speed, your RAM, the amount of RAM that you got, everything. It's very, very handy to do and very handy to see. You can also see the fans that you have plugged in. Asus's BIOS looks like this. Keep in mind that every board manufacturer, their BIOS is gonna look different. Even boards from the same manufacturer will look different depending on what kind of line they're coming from. So if they're more of the gaming line, they may have a different look than the ones that are for more of the standard consumer line. Laptops have really basic BIOSes for the most part, especially from Dell. It still looks like a BIOS from like the 90s. And, you know, going between AMD and Intel, those BIOSes are gonna be different, quite a bit different as well. So now I'm gonna talk about some of the settings and features that you should know about in your motherboard. And I'm gonna go into advanced mode for this. The first thing we're gonna talk about is the boot order. Now, this is really important when you're doing a migration, when you're installing a new OS, anything like that. It's really important to make sure that the boot priority is correct and you can do it here. So I only have one drive connected that has boot media on it. So it's only giving me one option. You can end up disabling if there are multiples, if you have like Linux on another drive and you wanna use it particular times, you can kind of do it like that. And you can also force a boot override. So if I click this, it is automatically gonna boot using that drive as the boot drive. Now, the next feature we're gonna talk about is XMP, DOCP, or Expo. Those are all different names for the same kind of setting. And that is the automatic um, overclocking, basically, of your RAM, but it's to the manufacturer's specifications using a profile that they have loaded on the RAM. So, as you can see here, I have the DOCP profile number one aligned on my RAM, and that's what's gonna have it run at the specs that are listed on the box. If you don't have this enabled, if you have it disabled, which it is by default on most motherboards, 
It, your RAM is going to be running at half speed usually. And it's suggested that you keep it disabled when installing an OS, but as soon as you're able to get into the OS, things are nice and stable. You can go ahead, go back into your BIOS, make sure you enable this feature. Again, it's going to have different names. XMP is for Intel and then DOCP or Expo is on AMD. Now, something that a lot of people don't pay attention to, but I think they should is the Q fan control. This allows you to adjust the fan curves of all the fans in your computer. And I do talk about this a little bit more in depth in a previous video when setting up your computer for the first time. I can do some more updated videos on particular features like this if you would like to. So if you want me to do a specific video on fan control and fan curves in your BIOS, leave a comment down below and let me know. But here, it's a really good place to adjust your fan curves. I normally suggest putting your case fans um, as high as they can go while still being quiet um, for most temperature. And then once it gets to a warm temperature, then you start ramping them up. Helps keep everything nice and cool. And again, I go into more detail in that other video. Now, another really good setting to know the location of is your PCIe settings. The reason for this is if you're ever using an extender or a ribbon cable for PCI for doing, let's say a vertical mount or using a, an unconventional case. Some of those will have communication issues between the motherboard and the GPU, and it won't properly change the PCI version automatically as they normally would. So knowing the location of these PCIe settings can be extremely handy in those particular situations. And on the Asus motherboards, it's an on the board device configuration. And then we scroll down here to the modes and we can go ahead and change it between gen one, two, three, or four. So I actually have to do this for my ITX cases because they do use a riser ribbon cable for the GPUs and it causes a communication issue. So I end up having to change the setting every single time if I want to use the ribbon cable for a GPU, which is all of the good GPUs I have. Um, just something to keep in mind. As we talked about at the beginning, in easy mode here, being able to see a bunch of information really quickly and easily is great for a whole bunch of purposes, especially when you're troubleshooting things. In advanced mode, they have even more here available for me, and I can see a whole bunch of information in a different configuration. Easy mode looks a lot nicer, so I use this often um, as a default when I just wanna quickly see things. But the advanced mode does have a couple more options in there and just a little bit more information. But being able to monitor information about your computer really quickly without having to boot is super handy. Asus also has it on the right-hand side here. And the final setting that I think you should definitely know the location of is how to update your BIOS. Now in Asus, it is here, it is the easy flash utility. There's a lot of different ways to end up updating. You can update it based off of your drive. You can do it based off of the web. Doing it based off of the drive is the best way to do it. I do have some videos on updating your BIOS if you do wanna check those out. I will leave those videos linked in the description below, but updating your BIOS is usually the scariest thing for a lot of people. And it doesn't have to be scary. You just have to take the right precautions, do the right steps, and you can update. Updating your BIOS is a good idea, especially when there are issues with the current version that you're on. But if you're not experiencing any major issues and you're on a somewhat updated version, there's no need to update your BIOS. It's just a good habit to do it every once in a while to get up to the latest version. Now for some nice to know settings that are not things that I consider to be necessary, but they're great to know about, is that a lot of motherboards actually have the ability for you to adjust the way that your lights work directly within the BIOS. So if you don't wanna have any lights on your motherboard working and anything connected to any of the RGB connectors working and you just wanna have a stealthy black computer, you can do that. Um, you can turn off a lot of the settings. You can turn off the way that the lights work when the computer is off versus when it's on. So for example, if we go ahead and go back to my advanced tab and we go back to the onboard devices configuration, there's a setting here where I can change the way that the RGB lighting works when the system is on, when the system is sleep or off, I can adjust all of that individually, which is really, really nice to have. Also in the advanced settings, we can go ahead and see the smart information for all of our drives. 
This is also really handy when trying to troubleshoot a troublesome drive. Having this information here is fantastic. So that's another great one. As mentioned before, if you plan on doing overclocking and undervolting, you should really look into a lot of information about your particular CPU and motherboard before you go ahead and do so. But if you go into the Extreme Tweaker for Asus boards, you can go ahead and adjust a whole bunch of information here in order to do the overclocking or undervolting that you want to. Going back to the advanced tab, installing Windows 11 on motherboards that don't have a TPM, you can technically do a virtual TPM and in the Asus boards, this is where this is. So if you're planning on installing Windows 11, this is a very helpful setting to know about as well. One of the other interesting boot settings to change is you can change the way that the boot logo works. So by default, as we saw when I was booting up, it is the Asus logo. Um, and then once we post into Windows, it's still the Asus logo until it finishes loading and then it loads into Windows. You can adjust that so that it's just the Windows logo after you post and goes into Windows. You can also do some really cool customizations and put your own logo there if you want to, or your own picture. Um, so that's also a really fun option. Um, and that is a little bit more advanced. I'll leave a link in the description uh, for a guide on how you can do that if you're really interested in that. But that's pretty interesting as well. And then one other really helpful thing on Asus boards especially, is being able to disable the automatic uh, messaging and installation of something like Armory Crate, which is Asus's little suite of software. You can disable that directly within the BIOS so that when you're on your computer and you don't have it installed, it's not constantly trying to remind you to install this piece of software. Now, when you wanna get out of your BIOS, you can either press F10, which is the save and exit, or you can just press exit and then go to I'm gonna discard changes. I didn't really make any anyway, so we're just gonna go ahead and discard and we're gonna load into Windows. As I mentioned, the ROG logo is the boot logo, which I didn't disable. Now, as we mentioned at the beginning, sometimes you may end up changing a setting which causes instability or your inability to post entirely. And the way that you can fix this is gonna be really dependent on your manufacturer and the particular board that you have, but there are multiple ways if you're able to get into your BIOS, the best and easiest way to do this is just to get into your BIOS and load the optimized defaults, which basically factory resets. That's gonna be the easiest way. Now, if you cannot even get into your BIOS, some other boards will have a button or a pair of connectors that if you short them, they will go ahead and clear the CMOS. Um, some motherboards like mine have a button that I can just press and it'll clear the CMOS. Now, if your motherboard does not have the buttons or the pins to clear your CMOS for you, you can just pull the CMOS battery out. Um, it's a little coin battery. You pull that one out, leave it out for maybe like 10 to 15 seconds, put it back in, and that should clear your memory and reset these settings to the default as well. Again, with the resetting of your BIOS and basically everything I've shown, the location of all of these may be different on your motherboard in your BIOS, especially if it's from a different manufacturer. So I really do suggest that you go ahead and just take a look into your BIOS and try to find where these particular settings are because they a lot of them are very handy to know about. They're handy to just kind of have an idea of in case you ever do need to change them. And if you're ever building yourself a new computer, a lot of those are really great options as well. Again, I do have a video specifically about BIOS stuff to do when you have built yourself a new computer, I will leave the link for that down in the description below. Now, with all that said, I really do hope you found this video helpful. And if not, I at least hope you found it interesting. If you did, I'd really appreciate it. If you like, subscribe. If you have any questions, comments, or feedback, you can leave those down in the comment section below and I'll try to get them all as quickly as I can. Big thanks to my Patreon sponsors, Thought Slime and Step Back. And thank you for watching to the end of this video. If you do wanna see any other videos where I talk about more technical stuff like this, you can check out the playlist right up here. And as always, stay safe out there. I'll see you next time.